Maintenance on your camper, trailer, hybrid or caravan is just as important as the maintenance on the vehicle towing it. And one of the most important and frequent parts of maintenance is of course the wheel bearings. Now your bearings are the only piece of hardware that connect your rotating wheel to the stationary stub axle. And without these in good working order, well, you won't be dragging your trailer very far. In today's episode, I'm gonna provide some useful information on bearing maintenance, what to look for, how often to check and replace, and of course, how to replace the bearings using only tools that you should be carrying in the back of your vehicle. Let's go. Checking, repacking, or even replacing the bearings can be somewhat intimidating, particularly if you haven't done it before, but with the right basic tools and the information in this episode, it is 100% something that you can do at home yourself, in a caravan park on your travels, or worst case scenario, on the side of the track. Checking your wheel bearings daily is easy. A simple touch of the center caps after a drive will give you an indication as to their health. A well lubricated, correctly tightened bearing will be a little warm, but not that hot after a drive. If all of those center caps are warmer than usual or hot to the touch, then it's time to have a closer look. Using a thermal imaging camera is also a great way to get a visual indication to see if any one of those bearings is hotter than others. As a general rule of thumb, it's a good idea to check your bearings at least once every 10,000 kilometers. A very basic check includes jacking the tire up off the ground, ensuring the handbrake is off, and placing your hands at the 12 and 6 o'clock positions and doing a push-pull motion. This will put lateral force against the bearing, and if you hear or feel a knocking noise, then your bearing could do with some adjustment. Ideally, we are looking for a smooth, resistance-free spinning motion with no lateral movement. In addition to routine checks every 10,000 kilometers, I get into the habit of replacing the entire bearing set every 20,000 kilometers, just given the weight of our camper and the conditions in which we use it, particularly off-road. And there's three ways to check, fix, or replace the bearings. Now firstly, if the bearings are relatively new with little lateral movement, we can just adjust the tension on the castle mark and continue on. Secondly, we can remove the drum, remove the seals and the bearing races and do what we call a repack, which is essentially replacing the grease within the existing hardware. Or thirdly, we can replace the bearings entirely. Now, I'm not a massive fan of repacking the bearings, although a suitable maintenance solution. If you damage one of the seals or notice something going wrong in those bearing sets, you're going to be having to carry spares anyway to get back on the road. Now, I run the Cruisemaster ATX suspension system and Cruisemaster make it very easy to buy replacement or spare parts for any components on the suspension arms and the bearings are no exception. For $65, you can get a complete bearing kit with all the hardware you need to replace the bearings on each of these axles. So for $260 every 20,000 kilometers, it's a cheap price to pay to keep the hubs from burning and the wheels turning. Now I inspected these bearings about 5,000 kilometers ago and they have taken a beating in the last few months, tackling remote tracks in the Northern Territory, the Gib River Road, several water crossings, the Tanami Road, four-wheel tribe tracks around Alice Springs, the Old Garn Heritage Trail, and the Unandata Track. Personally, I like to do this maintenance with the trailer still hooked up to the tow vehicle. This means it's gonna be no excessive movement in the trailer while we're working on those wheels. So now that my new sets are in, let's get straight to it. All the bearings and hardware we'll be working with today is located behind this dust cap. There are two ways to remove this cap. Firstly, if you have a large enough set of multi-grips, you can just pull it off. But what I do is use a small screwdriver to pry the cap off. If you are only repacking or adjusting, then be careful not to damage the cap as you'll need to reuse it. However, if you have a Cruise Master replacement kit, then this comes with a new cap included. Once this cap has been removed, we can observe a castle nut held in position by a split pin. Straighten out the split pin and remove and loosen that castle nut with a large adjustable wrench. There's a hardened steel washer behind this and this, along with that castle nut, will need to be retained and kept aside to be reused with the new bearings. There may be a little resistance to this assembly from the inner seal at the back, but a firm pull will remove it from the stub axle. So now that we have this drum off the stub axle, we can talk a little bit about this assembly here and how it all works and what exactly we are replacing. So this drum here is one single piece of metal. You have your studs for your wheels and of course the bearings inside. So let me put that down for just a moment. Inside that drum, we only have five pieces and that's these pieces here. On the outside or the side furthest away from the van, we have a bearing cup 
and a bearing race. And this is the outer bearing, it's quite a small bearing. You have the race here, which consists of a sleeve inside, some rollers, and the race that runs around it. And this mates to the outer bearing cu cup, which is inside that drum. Once they're clamped together, that will spin like so. On the inside of that drum, we have the inner bearing. Now it's exactly the same, we have a cup, we have a large bearing race as well that does go around the stub axle. And again, they're mated together and allows it to spin. And on that inner side, we also have this metal seal coated in a rubber coating. This will just stop dirt and debris coming in from behind the axle. So these five parts here are the main components when we talk about replacing a bearing. Now coming back to the drum here, it's quite easy to remove the outer bearing race. We simply just reach in and you can see it comes out just like that. And this is looking pretty dirty, which is why I'm replacing all of the bearings today. But that race there comes out just as simple as that. And it's a good idea just to have a little container or a tray just to put your dirty pieces in and keep them separated. Now flipping this drum over, we also have a bearing race in the rear as well, but we will note that it is held in by that rubber seal. Now if you're looking to protect it and reuse that seal, then you're going to have to try and pull it out with a specialty tool like a seal puller, but most of us don't own them and we sure don't carry them around on our touring trips. Because I'm replacing the whole lot today, I'm just going to be punching it out with a punch along with the races. So we're not taking too much care, we just want to get all of this gear out of the drum. This is also a good time to note that if you are changing your bearings, you can't leave these cups in the drum and just replace these bearing rollers here. Each of these sets are mated to the particular cups and even new ones that can't be swapped around. Anyway, let's get straight back to it. In order to get these cups out of the drum, there is a small lip visible from the opposite side. Grabbing a punch and a few taps and moving around that cup will slowly but surely push both the cup and the seal out of the drum, ensuring the drum is elevated just a little from the ground to allow that hardware to push out. Now that the inner cup is out, flip it over and do the exact same with the small outer cup. Now although we won't be using these cups again, set aside one inner, outer and one seal to assist in reinstalling the new gear and I'll show you why shortly. There we go, the inner cups are now pushed out of the drum assembly. I've taken some degreaser to it and I've cleaned up all of these inner surfaces here so we have a really clean and fresh mating surface for the new cups with the new bearing set. But putting that aside for just a moment, we can check out the old bearings. Now these are all the parts that we've just taken off that assembly. We can see here they are not that nice blue grease that they were when they were first installed. They're quite black, quite dirty, and that indicates a very worn out older bearing. So what we're going to do now is just give these a quick clean up. If you are repacking them, if you wanted to reuse the bearings if they weren't so bad, then you could clean them up and get all of this grease out and repack them with fresh stuff. But of course we're not doing that today. I still like to give it a quick cleaner. So we're going to take some degreaser and just try and get some of this old grease off. Let's take a quick look at the condition of these bearings. The reason I'm doing this is just to have a quick look at the condition of the metal rollers themselves, what we're looking for here is a nice clean metal surface. We don't want to see any bronzing or tinging on these rollers or any of the metal assembly pieces at all. That would indicate some hot spots in the bearings and they've got a little bit too warm either spinning and of course they'll deteriorate quite quickly if that's the case. To be honest, these don't look too bad. Obviously the grease is indicating that maybe some water or dirt and grit got in, but there's no scoring or any bronzing on that roller there, which is a good start. Having a look at the, uh, the smaller roller here. So here we actually do have a little bit of tinging on those rollers there. So we probably left these a little too late for replacement given the conditions that we were traveling, but they're not scored, which means it probably didn't get any dirt and debris in there but they've obviously got a little bit warm on that outer bearing. So whether or not there hasn't been quite enough preload or tension on those bearings, we just haven't had enough grease either way, but nevertheless, we're changing them today. Okay, so here is our Cruise Master bearing kit. In this kit, we get a new outer bearing. This comes with a brand new split pin as well. We of course get the outer dust cap. We get a new inner seal and of course, the new inner bearing as well. So let's get to fitting all this up. Now here we have that new inner bearing. You see it's quite a large bearing and we have that inner cup mated to it. Now first up, we're gonna be installing that cup 
into this drum assembly. This particular cup here is known as an interference fit, which means that the cup itself is actually a slightly larger diameter than the bore or the hole in this drum, which means it's only gonna go down as far as that by hand before it fouls on the metal. And this is all intentional. It's that friction between these two surfaces that holds this cup into place. But there is a bit of a technique to get them fitted. Using a hammer, we gently knock that outer cup into the drum, ensuring that it seats evenly. As we knock it down, we'll get to a point where the hammer will come in contact with the drum itself. This is where we can use the old parts. Taking the used cup that we just removed, placing the large edge against the new cup, and we can gently continue seating it in. Once it seats into its final place, you can feel a difference in the hammer bounce back and a difference in the tone of that hammer hitting the metal. Given the interference fit of the old cup too, you will need to gently punch out that old cup. And there we have it. The inner cup is now seated. We can then flip the drum assembly over and do the same again, gently hammering the inner cup into the drum, using the old hardware to seat it all the way back down and knocking the old hardware back out. Now that we have those cups seated inside that drum assembly, it's now come time to repack and re-grease these brand new bearings. So there is a term called repacking. We really want to get the grease all the way in this race and these bearing rollers. Failure to do so, any air pockets inside this race here could result in some hot spots on these rollers as it spins around as we're driving. And of course, hot spots will create premature wear and potentially even failure. So it's very important that we repack these correctly. Now, of course, we've got to do this larger inner bearing and the smaller outer bearing too. And we're going to be repacking that with a high quality, high temperature bearing grease. This one here is a Penrite one with a, a lithium complex. Now, one of these tubs should do all four wheels. I have got two here because this one is running out. Of course, it's also a good idea as well to keep plenty of rags or towels on hand because it is a bit of a messy job but let's get straight into it. Grabbing a palmful of grease and placing it onto our non-dominant palm, we can hold the new bearing with the larger opening facing downwards and start pressing the bearing into the grease. This is essentially pushing the grease into the race and through the rollers, all the way up until we start to see these grease worms, as they're referred to, appear from the top. Once we see this, we can rotate the bearing around and continue. We work our way all the way around the bearing until it's completely packed full of grease. We pack both the large inner and the smaller outer bearing in the same manner and set them aside for installation. I grab more grease and lay the inside of the drum assembly, particularly around the cups we just fitted. It's time to place the first inner bearing into the drum assembly to mate with that cup. Now we move on to that inner seal. The seal here is actually metal, however this particular part has a thin coating of rubber to assist with its sealing properties. Now a quick tip with the seals and their direction. Generally the opening part of the seal will always face the oil or the grease that it's attempting to hold. The theory here is that as the grease pushes against the seal from the inside, it's attempting to push out the surface and create a better seal. Now I like to put a little bit of grease over the seal and we can then start the installation by gently knocking it into place, ensuring that it seats squarely and evenly within that drum assembly. I use the old seal we knocked out earlier to assist with this as it just adds a little bit more surface area to evenly seat this new one. At this point, we can now clean off that stub axle, coating it with a fresh layer of clean grease. 
We now grab the drum assembly and push it back on to that stub axle, making sure we don't pinch or damage that fresh seal. We push the new assembly on, and then we can take our new packed outer bearing and place this onto the axle into the outer bearing cup. Find the washer you put aside earlier and note there is a flat and slightly rounded side to this washer and make sure that flat side pushes up against that outer bearing assembly. Reuse the castle nut and now comes time to tension the bearings. Now of course there are specialty tools to get that perfect tension on the new bearings on your trailer but I don't have them and of course I wouldn't be carrying them on the road anyway so this is how I go about doing it. I tighten the castle nut gently while spinning the drum. They get to a point where the drum binds up and then I loosen that nut. Do this a couple of times to ensure that the bearings are seated evenly within this assembly. Without creating too much tension, you can then align the castle nut with one or two of the cross drilled holes in the stub axle, where we can reinstall that new split pin in the kit. The tension of a bearing set is referred to as preload or end float. Preload being positive tension being placed onto that bearing set and end float having just a little bit of slack in that bearing assembly. Now, of course, we're trying to get to the most neutral position possible. We don't want too much tension and we don't want any end float. But this being said, if you are installing a brand new set of bearings, it won't hurt just to have the smallest amount of preload as they will wear and seat just a little bit as they start to bed in. But if you're repacking an existing set of hardware, you wanna really try and get that as neutral as possible. Once our split pin has been separated and cut to length, we can grab the new dust cap ready for installation either using a rubber mallet or a piece of wood between a hammer and the cap, gently knock this into place. This dust cap is also an interference fit, so once it's seated, that's it. It will remain there until you come to recheck it. Or so we hope. Time to refit the wheel and tire and replace the wheel nuts. Lower the wheel, torque the nuts down, and we're done. There we have it, we now have a brand new set of bearings, freshly greased and perfectly tensioned, ready for another 10,000 kilometers of stress-free travel. It may be a little bit daunting or intimidating as of, of a job if you haven't done it before, but I guarantee once you've done one or two of them, it is quite straightforward and you'll be doing them forever more, not only to save yourself some money, but also to guarantee stress-free travel on the Australian remote tracks in the outback, where these sorts of parts are much harder to find. Now, of course, today we only did the one axle, so I've got to go around and do the rest, but it shouldn't take me too long. Well, I hope the information in today's episode was helpful and useful in learning about bearing maintenance, how to check them, when to check them, and of course, how to go about replacing them, whether it be on your driveway at home or out on the tracks. Whether we see you out the tracks or not, we'll be sure to see you next time here on Exploring Oz. Cheers.